Oikikos, den ties allemaal moos. Onder die oprooi vlees, zelfs een snoep is boos. Hallo, how's it? My name is Ben Kruger. Welcome to my kitchen, and this is Poikikos. I've had a request that I should demonstrate how to make bultong. Now, bultong has got nothing to do with Poikikos, unless you make a bultong poiki. But, bultong is probably as South African as it gets. Bultong is basically flavored dried meat, which you then slice into thin pieces and eat as a snack. First, we start with a nice piece of meat. This happens to be silver side, but you can use rump, you can use fillet, you can use any nice big piece of meat. Now we have to slice it. And to slice it, you need a really sharp knife. Now you will see that there's a nice layer of fat on it, and bultong needs to have a bit of fat on it, I always say. I'm going to slice it so that each piece of bultong has a little ribbon of fat running around the back of it. So we start. We slice pieces about that thick, it's about a centimeter. Then you're going to need a container like this that can seal very well. Put your piece of meat in it and slice the next one. And you continue on in this vein until you have a layer of meat in your container. Once you have a layer of meat like this, you take brown vinegar and you pour it over. Make sure that the meat is completely covered with the vinegar. Like that. And then continue on with another layer. A good knife is essential because you can get a nice clean cut. And if your knife is blunt, you're not going to get that. And your bolt on when it's done will look awful. And this is a product to be proud of. You don't want it to look awful, do you? All our meat has now been placed in the vinegar. Now it's time to seal the box. The meat is going to stay in the vinegar for at least two hours. Some people say one hour is enough. I prefer three to four hours. What the vinegar does, it kills the harmful bacteria and it helps to preserve the meat. Now, in this container, I can flip it over every hour or so to make sure that the meat is completely covered with vinegar. When the meat comes out of there, you pour the vinegar off and you pat the meat dry with paper towel. And then it's time for the Biltong Spice. Now, this product um, is Crown National's Safari Biltong Seasoning. It's a really good product and I use it quite often. If you can't get hold of this, you can make your own. And making your own is quite simple. One third salt, one third freshly cracked black pepper, and one third cracked dried coriander. Mix it together well, pour that over your meat, and you'll have a very good biltong. The other thing you can do is to look at our old friend Flippin' Lacquer Spice. Use it as is. Just Put it over the meat and you will have very nice biltong. Three hours have passed and it is now time to take the biltong out and put the spice on. Open it like so. Take the meat out. Okay, meat is out. We pour the vinegar back. We're not going to use this vinegar again. We're actually going to get rid of it. I just want to pour it out of the box. Here we go. Now we take some paper towel. And you take your built on spice and quite generously cover the bottom of the box. Don't be shy. It's a lot of spice. You don't need to be careful with this. You can't harm the meat or the box. There we go. Now you take each piece of meat and just give it a dab and put it on the spice.
Až jej nikam pojti bol, tam je hladný kôr, pojti kôr se zbúr kôr. Our meat is now thoroughly covered with spice. I'm just tapping the lid a bit drier and putting it on. At this point you don't really have to cover the biltong, it can stay open. I just cover it in case of insects, flies, that kind of thing. That stays in there for an hour and then I'm going to introduce you to the Biltonginator 3000. It is a plastic crate with holes that take dowling sticks like so. Now you will notice over here I've got little holes covered with gauze. That's to keep the insects out. You need the holes because just now I'm going to put a fan on it which will draw air through the box and dry the meat. Okay, let's put this aside for a moment and then um, I'll show you how we hang the meat, which is a um, plastic coated paper clip that I've bent open. You put it through the meat. Let's bring the bottom and the back. There we go. And you hang it. Very simple. I'm going to hang the rest of the meat. And when I'm done, we'll come back and I'll show you what's special about the lid. All the biltong is now hanging. Make sure that the pieces of meat do not touch each other because you want a free flow of air through the crate. Now my holes that suck the air in are on this side. So now I bring my lid and you will see that I've used a fan from an old computer. I've also got the gauze on the inside of that because you don't want insects to climb through. You put it on so that the fan is on this side, the holes are on this side, the air gets moved through the box. Plug it in Fan starts running three to four days later. The Biltonginator has provided you with Biltong. If you don't want to build one of these things, or if you don't think you can build one of these things, actually it's very silly, it took me about half an hour. Um, you can hang your Biltong in any airy place where there's a movement of air. My grandfather used to hang his Biltong under the bed. Just put newspaper down because there is a bit of dripping from the vinegar. That only lasts about a day, day and a half, then you won't have any more moisture and then the biltong starts drying out. If you don't have a fan drying them like this, it's going to take you up to a week to get edible biltong. With a fan, as I say, three to four days. Um, commercial biltong makers use heat as well and they make biltong in a couple of hours. I like the slightly slower process. I like walking into the kitchen and smelling the lovely air wafting out of this computer fan from my Biltonginator 3000. Um, yeah, and then we'll eat Biltong. Hi, good evening. I've well, just come back from a hard day at work. Uh, the Biltong has been in the Biltonginator 3000 for four days. It's time to open that puppy up. There we go. Take off the lid and take out one piece of Biltong. Put it down again. It's time for the acid test. When I squeeze the biltong, it's still soft, it's got a bit of a give in it, which means it's probably not very dry, dry enough to eat. So using my special custom-made biltong cutter, I'm going to slice this biltong quite finely and have a taste.
There we go, you can see it's still pink in the middle, with a nice piece of fat on it. Let's give it a try. Nothing. But nothing. That's like good build -off. Come on. Make your own. It's not rocket science. And it's worth it.